Prefixes in chemistry, well, you know that mono means one and di means two and tri means three, tetra is four, right? Not quad or anything like that, tetra is four. Well, there are kind of semi-trivial names that we give to the first four uh, uh, carbons that would be in a carbon chain that makes up an organic molecule. If you have one carbon, instead of saying mono, we just say meth. That's, that's, it's, it's accepted, that's what we do, that's what we use, and so meth means one. Eth is two, prop is three, and bute is four. And you've got to memorize those. Nobody's going to give you a chart that actually includes those all the time for you to peruse. So the idea is this. Meth, eth, prop, bute. One, two, three, four. Meth, eth, prop, bute. One, two, three, four. That's what they... Meth, eth, prop, bute. One, two, three, four. Those are the ones that you have to know. And then everything after that is not trivial at all. It's just the normal types of prefixes that we're used to in chemistry. Pent, well, I just put pentahexahepta-octanonadeca, right? I put the A's at the end, you know, pentahexahepta-octanonadeca. What that is, is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 would be undeca, and 12 is dodeca, and 13 is triskadeca. Yeah, like tr triskadecaphobia, which is the fear of the number 13. Cool, hey? Yeah. So, here's the thing. Meth, eth, propute, 1, 2, 3, 4, pentahexahepta-octanonadeca. And then we've got from 1 to 10, basically that's all you got to really need to consider. And then we can start to actually build these molecules and come up with some, well, some really cool names, some really cool structures, some really cool reactions. That's coming now. We're going to consider a whole bunch of categories of organic compounds. And the first ones are called aliphatics. Those are going to be these straight chained hydrocarbons. So that's what aliphatics are. And they can actually be broken down into things called alkanes alkenes and alkynes and also some cyclo -al alkyl groups as well. Uh, what that means is this. Alkenes are single bonded hydrocarbons. Alkenes have double bonds in them. Alkynes have triple bonds in them. And cyclos are actually put together in circles or connected uh, uh, organic molecules connected in ring structures. They all fall under the aliphatic type of umbrella. Aromatics are chemicals that have a benzene ring in them called C6H6, and we'll see what that is in just a while too. Hydrocarbon derivatives are, are, are when we attach things called functional groups onto uh, various hydrocarbons. Now, these functional groups really, actually a functional group could be um, um, an alkene or an alkyne. D double and triple bonds are considered to be functional groups as well. Um, and so are things like alcohols, which are OHs, and carboxylic acids, which are COOH, and esters as well. Those are functional groups that we are going to consider, as well as some other functional groups too, called amines and amides, ketones and aldehydes, things like that. Um, those are functional groups that make up something called hydrocarbon derivatives. And then there are halogenated hydrocarbons that are also functional groups, but the halogenation just means this. You know how chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine are in group 17 of the periodic table, the halogens, right? Well, you can substitute those guys onto these types of chemicals to make halogenated hydrocarbons. And now we're just going to name all, and find ways to name all of those. Here we go. And we start with something called alkanes. Alkanes, again, single bonded, chained hydrocarbons. How do we name those types of chemicals? Right. Well, the general formula for alkanes is CnH2n plus 2. Whatever number of carbons you have, you have twice as many hydrogens and then two more. That kind of seals up the ends on either side of the hydrocarbon. So now, when you look at this formula right here, and you say, okay, got myself that Lewis diagram right there, where we've got obeyance of this general formula, one carbon, so we've got twice as many hydrogens plus two more. That formula right there, because it's got one carbon in it, is meth, and because it's single, well, it's not really single bonded to anything yet, but that hydrocarbon is called methane. And you know, all know that. That's CH4. That's methane. Okay, so what's the next one in this chemical family? Well, it would be C2H how many? Well, twice as many plus 2. 4 plus 2 is 6. C2H6. That formula right there has a condensed formula, or, or structure, sorry, that's going to look like this, right? Or it's going to look like this if you write it out as a condensed 
structural formula. It's going to be CH3, CH3. And the name of that is going to be ETH for F, that's two carbons. And because there's a single bond to those carbons, it's ane, and that's called ethane. Okay, so we've got methane, we got ethane. And now what do we got? Well, what's this again? Well, that's going to be propane. Why? Because that's got a CH3, CH2, CH3 there, and that's called propane. Now, what would this be? We've already done that one. One, two, three, four carbons. So we put those on there. Now, you know what? To do these diagrams properly, you always have to put your H's on when you do it this way. Now, I, that's going to become tedious. I'm going to start to do line diagrams pretty soon, right? But right now, what's that? Well, that's four carbons long, all single bonded. So that's four is bute, and then single bond is ane. That's called butane. That's C8, that's what? C, <laughs> C4, and then I can tell without even counting the H's, it's going to be 10, twice as many plus two. That's C4H10. That's called butane. But you know what you can do with that formula? That formula can actually have different ways of drawing that structure. You see, what if you had this? A carbon attached here with a hydrogen here, here, and here. Now, you know, these hydrogens would be back in there. This would be pushed out. Hey, we're just drawing that as a flat Lewis diagram, not a real proper structure. But what's the deal with this? You'd still have the formula C4H10 but you can't call that butane because that molecule right there actually has different physical and chemical properties than that straight chained C4H10. As a matter of fact, C4H10 straight chain would have a higher boiling point because of the larger surface area than this one right here. This needs a different name. And because it's a different chemical, it needs a, well, it's not, it's, it's not really a different chemical totally, is it? So the thing is, what you call this formula, as opposed to the one that we drew before, they are isomers of each other. Same formula, different structure, hence different name, called isomers. So butane has an isomer. And the isomer for butane is going to be, well, what do you do? You find the longest continuous chain of carbons, and you name it after that. So watch this. The longest continuous chain of carbons, one, two, three, or one, two, three. You can go down, too, for the longest continuous chain, you know. You don't have to go all straight across all the time. What's this? That's an arm. What's this? That's an arm. But it just happens to be bent. It's still an arm, see? So the point is, the longest continuous chain can be bent as well. So the deal is, you can go this way or that way. Well, we're going to go straight here. So one, two, three. So what is it? It's a propane. But wait. How do we say that there's a one carbon something on this propane? This is actually called right here. Now, I'm going to call it a branch. Now, it's called a substituent, okay? Oh. Um, but, and, and, and so we're going to call it just, you know, it's just a branch coming off of the longest chain. And so what we call that then is we end all branches in YL. All the substituents end in YL, IL. So it's a one carbon branch. So it's a meth but it ends in ill. So it's a methylpropane. Yeah, that's right. Now, this one's called methylpropane. Sometimes we're going to have to tell where the branch is located. Not in this one. You don't need to because it would be redundant. That's just what this is called, methylpropane. And that would be an isomer of butane. That's pretty cool. Now let's do some more of these and really build on this concept.